Hi, this is question number 11 on the AQA June 2019 Paper 1 Foundation Tier Non-Calculator Paper. Okay, this is question number 11. Here is a triangle on a square dotty grid. Okay, so we've got a triangle here. Okay, so it's 4 by 3. Okay, if you wonder, so it's 4 by 3. Okay, squares actually, and then it, it's going to join up diagonally. Okay. So, part A, on the grid below, show how you can make a parallelogram using two triangles. So, it's going to look something, okay, like this. Let's just start again, sorry. So, it's going to look something... Like this. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have four squares. Yeah. Okay. So that is my parallelogram, actually. So if we can see that it's going to look something like that. Okay, so it should look something like that. Okay where the lengths are, are a bit, actually a bit longer, okay, but that is the parallelogram, actually, so, so, so it looks like that, actually, so it's one triangle and two triangles, okay, so that's a parallelogram, so it's two sides that are parallel, okay, on there. For part B, show how you can make a trapezium with three of these triangles, well, trapezium looks something like this, guys, so we're aiming for something that looks like this, Okay, so let's just go. Oh, I think I might have made a mistake there, guys. Sorry, it might be a bit too long. Let's just change color, actually, make it a bit more easier. So, like that. Then we're going to go four across. Okay, oh, we'll, go, actually, we'll go a bit more. Oops, actually, what we want to do is delete that, sorry. Go down like that, and then go across like that, okay? Then we're going to have one, two, and three triangles, okay, for the trapezium. For part C, okay... So, on the grid below, show how you can make a rhombus. So, rhombus is like a tilted square, so the side lengths are going to be the same. So, I'm going to go up three, go across three. Go down like this. Okay, but that's not going to be equal, sorry. So, I might need to extend that. Like that, and like that, okay, although I think actually what we should do is make this line a bit longer, so let's just delete that again, so let's make this four squares, okay, and then it's going to be four squares across, and then it's going to be four Okay, so rhombus, guys, is what I call a tilted square. So all the distances are going to be the same length. Four across, four diagonal, four across again, and then four diagonal again. Okay, so it goes through those four points. Okay, let, let's just make it a bit of a better line. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to have four triangles here. Okay, so we're going to have... Triangle there. So it's four triangles, guys. Okay. Go like another. Oops. Okay, so we're going to have four triangles in that one. Okay. So that would be our answer. So four triangles for the rhombus.
This is question number 14. Here is a cuboid. We'll cut the volume. So the volume of a cuboid, guys, it's the length times the width times the height. So it's the length times the width times the height. Okay? So it's 7 times 5 times 10. So 7 times 5 is 35. 35 times 10, guys, is 350. And the units, in this case, is going to be centimetres cubed. Okay, so 350 centimetres cubed. Now, we do not actually cube our answers. So the units is just units to the power of 3. So we're not actually cubing anything. So that is going to be our final answer. Okay. Question 15. Circle the shape that has a uniform cross-section. Now, what this means is, is when I chop it at any point, it is going to give me that like, like same cross-section. So, a cylinder is the answer because wherever I chop it, the cross-section is always going to be a circle. Okay? Whereas a cone, it is going to be slightly diff different actually because it's going to be like a different point. Okay, at each part of the um, cone, actually. Okay, and then it can't be a sphere because it is going to end up giving us like a different shape, okay, and a different size. Okay, and it can't be a pyramid because it is going to give us like a, a, a different cross section each time, actually. But the answer is a cylinder because when I chop a cylinder, it is always going to give me like a circle as my answer. Right, guys, this is question number 21. Anna plays a game with an ordinary fair dice. If she rolls a 1, she wins. If she rolls a 2 or a 3, she loses. If she rolls a 4, 5 or a 6, she rolls again. When she has to roll again, if she rolls an odd number, she wins. If she rolls an even number, she loses. Part A. Complete the tree diagram with the four missing probabilities. Okay, so, so it's a dice 1 to 6, so the probability that she gets a 1 is just 1 sixth, because it appears once out of a total possible 6 times. A 2 or a 3 is going to be 1 sixth plus 1 sixth, so when we have the word or, we add the probabilities together, so 1 sixth up 1 sixth is 2 sixth, which is the same as one third. Okay, so dividing top and bottom by two for two sixths, I get one third. Okay, for the second part, when she has to roll again, if she rolls an odd number, she wins, and if she rolls an even number, she um, loses. Now, odd numbers on a ordinary dice is one, three, and five, so it's three sixth year or a half. And that's also got to be a half, because the trees have to always add to make one, because even is two, four, and six. So that appears three times out of six, and that is my tree, guys. Okay, so hopefully that, that question makes sense, okay? Part B, is Anna more likely to win or lose? You must show the probability that she wins. Okay, so the probability that she wins, okay, we're going to take it in, in, in stages. It says that if she rolls a 1, she, she wins, actually. So, we're going to have 1 sixth year because that is going to be a win. The probability that she also wins, so there is like another way of doing it, is... If she gets a 4, 5, and, five and a 60, she, 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 she's able to roll again. So, I'm going to have a half here. Okay. And then, and then if she rolls a odd number, she wins. Now, the probability of an odd number is a half. So, I've got a half times a half, which is one quarter. Okay, now if I add my answers together, that's going to give me the total probability that she will end up winning. And then we will work out the probability that she loses and compare the fractions together. So 1 6 plus 1 quarter, well let's put it over 12. Put it over 12. Okay, is equal to a fraction out of 12. 6 times 2 is 12. So that means 1 times 2 is 2, 
and 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 1 times 3 is 3, and the answer is equal to 5 twelfths. So that is all the possible ways that she can win. So I, I, I'm going to just I'll repeat that, actually, just to be clear. So she can win by one outcome, which is rolling a one. Okay, so that's this one here, for, for like, like um, rolling a one. She can also win, okay, by rolling a four five or a six because she, she it says that they allow her to roll again so if she rolls that then she gets like another chance and on the second chance if she get, if if she gets like an odd number then she still wins and that's where this probability comes into play so it's a half times a half so it's that part times that part here so a half times a half which is one quarter Okay, so that is the possible, okay, and then adding my wins together, so that is a probability that she will win, actually. Okay, now for losing, okay, she would have to get a two or a three, so that's going to trick away, so it's going to be one third, okay, so that, 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 that. That is going to just be that outcome there. Because it says if she, if she rolls a two or a three, she loses. She could also lose by rolling a four, five, and a six, and then rolling a even number respectively. Okay, so it's going to be a half times a half. Okay, so she is able to roll a four five and a six and then and then a even number and then she will get one quarter so adding these fractions together so one third plus one quarter okay is equal to out of 12 plus out of 12 so three times four is equal to 12 that means 1 times 4 is equal to 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. So 4 twelfths add 3 twelfths is 7 twelfths. Now 7 twelfths is bigger than 5 twelfths. So she's more likely to lose. So the, so the final part is saying, so since 7 twelfths is greater than 5 twelfths, she's more likely to to lose okay so hopefully that question makes sense okay and that guys is the end of today's video so i hope you found the video useful and informative if you did please press like please um, press the subscribe button and also please cl click that bell icon to turn on post notification so you don't miss out on my regular uploads on this channel and please please guys share this video and share this channel with anyone that is wanting some extra math support and extra maths help with their studies for GCC, Key Stage 3 and A Level Maths okay thanks for watching I hope everyone's well stay safe stay healthy and I'll catch you in the next one bye for now